Hey guys, Silky J here, pregame.com. Joined here by the one and the only Uncle Dave. You guys can find him on Twitter at Dave underscore Essler. You guys can get me at Sleepy J underscore pregame. Uncle Dave and I, we're going to go ahead. We're going to break down two NFL wildcard games for you. We're going to go, we're going to concentrate on the Saturday games. Uncle Dave, uh, we have the Raiders, we have the Bengals, and we have the Patriots and the Bills. Why don't we go ahead and start out? Let's do the late game first here, Uncle Dave, with New England and Buffalo. We have a current line on this game right now, Buffalo minus four, and we have a total of 44 in this game. Current weather report, Uncle Dave, for this game is going to be cold. Now, we will not have the wind like we had first meeting between these two teams, but the weather will be kind of brisk, and I I don't believe it really helps or hurts either of these two teams. Both of these teams could play in the cold weather, but you are a Patriots fan there, Uncle Dave. And you and I are on opposite sides in this one. So I'm going to let you go ahead and rip and run first. How do you see this game playing out? Gosh, I wish I knew for sure. But, you know, yeah, we, we, we see it a little differently. And I think that's great for the listeners because they'll get, you know, two points of view. And, you know, because I'm a Patriots fan, um, you know, don't don't put more or less stock in, in what I think. Um, but, you know, I did take New England. And I, mean, I, I work hard at not being a homer. I, you know, I mean, I don't think I am. I mean, I think, Sleepy, that – this is a overreaction, a classic one here. I mean, people overreacted to New England beating the Bills uh, in Buffalo in that win when they threw the ball three times, uh, and they overreacted when they when they met in the rematch in Foxborough. Uh, and now I think they're overreacting to that game and the relative ease with which the Bills won that game. Um, you know, uh, indeed, yeah, the, the Bills finished strong, no doubt, but they won four straight, including beating the Patriots. But, you know, to me – the other three don't say a whole lot, uh, Carolina, Atlanta, and the Jets. And, and all three of those games are actually at home. So, yeah, I mean, the Patriots lost three or four down the stretch, and, you know, people are like, oh, no, maybe they're not going to face Brady in the Super Bowl, or maybe they were overrated. Well, I think, again, I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. You know, those losses were you know, at Miami where they, they don't do well, and, and two of the other ones were obviously to the Bills and the Colts, who are a good team, and that was also uh, at Indianapolis. So, you know, I look at it sleepy, and it's a division game. Uh, there aren't any surprises. Uh, and in my opinion, I think it's the Patriots, actually, that, that have nothing to lose. And, and, and maybe Buffalo with all the pressure and expectations, if you will. And, you know, speaking of Buffalo, it's January. It's Saturday. The high that day is going to be 10. The low is going to be 2. Uh, so it's going to be closer to 2 than 10 uh, at 8.15 Saturday night. And, you know, I think after that last game they played in Buffalo, uh, in that, in that, you know, windy, horrible weather, I, I think that actually gives New England a little bit of a psychological advantage. I mean, they they've already kind of been there, done that, and you know, we still have, I think, statistically, two of the best defenses in the AFC. And you know, I think, as I say often, I, I like to simplify things, and you know, you can you can break everything down to the eleventh degree, and you know, this DVOA stat, and yada yada yada. But you know, when all is said and done quarterback, coach, defense, and, you know, I think New England has the better coach. I think New England has the better defense, and I think they're getting points they might not need. So I like the Patriots, and let me throw another one out there, Sleepy. I saw a, a Mac Jones over one-and-a-half touchdowns prop uh, at plus 175, I believe I saw it on DraftKings, and uh, I don't think the Bills are going to let the Patriots run like they didn't in, in the game in Foxborough, uh, so Damian Harris props are probably not as great as people might think, but so the Patriots are going to score. I think Jones is going to have to throw it into the end zone. Um, and I don't think he's going to throw it into the end zone a lot. Uh, but if they get one during the during the game, and, you know, they, even if they're down in the, in the fourth quarter and I'm wrong and you're right, uh, maybe Matt gets a garbage time one. So I, I think the price on that prop is pretty doable too. So uh, I will stop rambling here and let you tell me what you got. Here's my concerns right now for New England. As I look through their schedule, Uncle Dave, I noticed that out of all the wins that they have this year, out of their 10 wins, they've beaten two teams that are currently in the playoffs. One of them is Tennessee, and the other is the Bills. The Bills was in that crazy win game. And look, I think that was an outlier game, but I think that that game kind of comes back to haunt New England. The other game that they won was against Tennessee. Tennessee was without Derrick Henry, they were without A.J. Brown, and they were without Julio Jones. All the other wins they have were against non-playoff teams. The Jets twice, the Titans, the Panthers, the Browns, the Falcons, the Jaguars. So that worries me. Strength of schedule worries me a little bit. And the strength of wins for that particular 
Patriots team worries me a little bit. Now, when I look at the Bills, overall, I I was off of them for a number of weeks because I felt like they lost their identity. They had no rushing game to speak of. Matt Breida was in there. Zach Moss was in there. Devin Singletary was in there. And they had no running attack. It was like, well, you got three running backs and you're still running your quarterback uh, to, to kind of be your rushing attack. And I'm like, they need to fix that. They're not going to beat anybody in the playoffs if they don't have a rushing attack. And the minute I said that, and I don't know if it was the the Patriots game to where they got beat up 33-21, to 21, but I believe it might have been the Indy game to where Buffalo kind of said, all right, we need, we need to do something differently here because Buffalo was on a little bit of a cold streak there too. So it worries me that Buffalo might actually come in as the team that they're not going to be one-dimensional, as a lot of teams thought. And I do want to go back to the Patriots and the two games that they played with Buffalo. Let's take the win game for what it was. It was a win game. But Buffalo went out there, and they tried to mix in the run, and they tried to mix in the pass. New England didn't. They went out there, and they just ran the ball. And give them credit, they, they won that game, but they didn't pass the ball at all. And when they needed to pass against Buffalo at home, Mac Jones looked terrible. I think he completed 14 passes and he had two interceptions. So you're going to take two games against Buffalo to where your quarterback has 15 or 16 total completions, and now you're going to put him on the road in a playoff environment against a team that has experience, against a coach that has experience, and he's a rookie. And I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on him, and that's what worries me uh, overall right now. For New England, can they match up with this team? Yeah, sure. I mean, they're two division teams. They know each other. But here's something that I thought of. This is what gave me more more caution than anything, Uncle Dave. I opened up pregame.com. I went to the game center, and I looked at the odds, and I said, Patriots, game of the year, playoff game of the year, plus four and a half. No way. That line's going down. Patriots have a really good chance to beat them. And that was my initial knee-jerk reaction. It didn't take me more than two seconds to find my favorite play on the card. And I started to think about it. And I'm like, the public's going to be all over the Patriots. And as I've looked through each and every game, and I've heard all the podcasts, and I've seen everything on social media, the pros and the Joes this week are all on the same teams. They all like the Raiders. They all like the Patriots. They all like the Niners. They're all back in the Bucks, the Chiefs, and the Rams. Here's my prediction, and I'll just make it short and sweet. The pros and the Joes are going to get slaughtered this week. I am 100% sure that I don't see how the books don't make money. And it's not that I'm going with the bookies on each and every game. But, man, I'll tell you, when the pros and Joes align, that worries me. And one of the things that, Uncle Dave, that we talk about are biases. And going into the playoffs, I think there's a number of biases that are hard for even the professional betters to shake. And a lot of that is, what did we last see? Well, well, throughout the entire year, Uncle Dave, we're, we're always trying to, as professional betters, trying to say, well, that's what we last saw. That's what the public is going to attach to. But I think one of the things that the professionals attach to when the playoffs come, one, we're just as much of football fans as anybody else. We want to see certain teams get to the Super Bowl. I mean, I think that's just nature. Do I want to see a San Francisco Buffalo Super Bowl? No, I don't. So am I more than likely probably looking to fade those teams? I probably am. But I also think a lot of professional bettors at this time of year are starting to look at their future tickets that they have uh, for their Super Bowl chances. So I think that there's a lot of that built in too is, well, not only are they rooting for a particular Super Bowl, but now they're rooting for particular tickets. And what I'm noticing, the pros and the Joes are all on the same side on all these damn games, and that worries me a lot. And the fact that I had a knee-jerk reaction to the Patriots as soon as I opened up the odd screen on pregame.com, I started to think about it, and I thought about it some more, and I haven't heard anybody on the Bills. And I've been making a case for the Bills over the last couple of days for myself, and it's not that I'm in love with them, Uncle Dave. It's just that I don't want the Patriots in this game. I want to go ahead and I want to take the Bills. I want to take them small. I feel right now that they're probably the right side. And here's my last piece to this. Do we really think that McDermott has shown everything throughout this entire season? 
I don't believe so. I believe he's held some back. And I believe that there are certain players that just haven't been showing up in the box score over the last couple weeks. Cole Beasley hasn't shown up. Devin Singletary hasn't shown up prior to the last couple weeks. So he's been mixing and matching things that he's been doing. And do you really think Isaiah McKenzie is going to be the player that New England tries to stop? I mean, he burnt them, what, he had 11 catches, 115 yards, and a touchdown the last time the Bills saw them. So I think that Buffalo might have some tricks in their bag that they haven't released yet and that they haven't shown to New England. And I think that there's a potential that they can break them out for this game. And if I need Mac Jones to go out there and throw the football over two-plus games with only 14 completions and two interceptions, I'm worried. I'm really, really worried, and I'm worried also – that the Patriots ran the ball so much that Buffalo might have a pretty good idea how to slow them down now. I don't know, Uncle Dave. That That's kind of where my thoughts are at. Uh, I'm still thinking about it, but the more I think about it, man, I really like the Bills in this game. And I know we're on opposite sides, and that's your team. But um, that that's kind of where my mind's at right now. So I know I said a lot. I talked for a lot there, Uncle Dave. But at least I give you some things to think about and kind of digest. So – if you want to go ahead and, uh, you know, you can push back on anything that I said or maybe agree with some of the stuff I said as well, but that's where I'm at right now with that game. Well, I mean, you make valid points. I mean, you know, throw out the fact that they're my team. I've been doing this long enough to be able to separate my my emotion from my checkbook. But, you know, a couple things that you mentioned that um, I, I don't know if it's pushback, but uh, I could interpret it another way. And that kind of goes to handicapping all the time. You know, you can – you can make numbers say what you want, but you know you brought up the fact that the Bills, you know, maybe tried to do too much in that win game with with throwing the ball and maybe not, you know, making a game plan for that particular game. Well, that's coaching, that's preparation, and you know, check mark Bill there, and you know, yeah, the Patriots didn't necessarily beat a lot of good teams, but you know, aside from New England, I think the only win the Bills have over a playoff team was was Kansas City way back when. So, yeah, maybe. Um, and it's funny that, you know, you brought up, you know, when I first looked, I saw New England, and, yep, that's my game of the year or, or what have you. I, I love it. And I have found myself to be my, my, my first instinct is generally the one I'm going to go with. I just don't like to change and flip uh, for me, only because um, it's easier for me to swallow being wrong and in this case, having the Bills win by more than four or four and a half, than it is for me to go ahead and and flip and say, I bet I really like the Bills, and then have the Patriots win outright, because then I'm going to be really pissed. Um, and recency bias, yeah, you're right. And, and this is a little bit what makes me hesitant about liking Buffalo, is, yeah, we have the recency bias, and the last thing people saw was the Patriots, you know, basically falling on their ass in Miami. Now, they always fall on their ass in Miami, but... You know, you know that, I know that, the public knows that. The public doesn't know that, that New England always struggles there. So I would have thought, okay, well, the Bills did what they had to do against the Jets. Maybe they worked a little bit harder than people thought, but they, they did win, they did cover. Um, and New England, uh, a game that they needed to win, but not really, because uh, nobody thought the Jets would beat Buffalo anyway. Um, so that's what sticks in people's minds, and yet they're still betting on the Patriots. So, you know, those are my sort of counterpoints, if you will. None of them are... Are you know, just in the difference in the way that we interpret things, I think, Sleepy. So, um, I don't, I, I only hope that I'm right, and uh, I could well not be. I think something that the betters probably are going to think in this, in this particular game, Uncle Dave, is you know, do they want to go ahead and fade Belichick? How has that worked out for anybody over the last freaking 20 years? It hasn't worked well. I think that's one of the things that might be drawing people to the Patriots. Here's a concern, though. That I do have, and this is for New England, not for Buffalo, would actually be a positive for Buffalo. And it was like, how did these teams finish? You know, I gave out the Patriots. We have a, a local email thread that, that we have, and I said, look, the Patriots at plus 440 to win the division, I feel is a very good bet that they're probably just as good as Buffalo. And the Patriots were in prime position to go ahead and win the division, and, and, they, and they gave it up. They lost. They lost three of their last four games. That, that has to mean something. They're not playing their best football going into the playoffs. And Buffalo, they've won four straight. And not only did they were they a game back or a half a game back, they ended up taking control of the division, doing what they needed to do, and win four straight. 
And now they've established some type of an identity within their rushing game. So I feel like these two teams right now are, are starting to be separated. And a lot of people think that these two teams are, are rather close. The line's only Bills minus four. I think you'd probably agree with me in a playoff setting here, Uncle Dave, even though it's the Patriots, that the Bills got to be close to three with their home field advantage with Bills Mafia in their stadium in the cold. I feel like these teams, in my opinion, they're, they're just not, it's not a point, a point difference. People might disagree with this, Uncle Dave. I think that there's more pressure on the Patriots to win this game than there are the Bills. If the Bills go to the AFC Championship game and get knocked out, do you think anybody's going to care? If the Bills lose this game, do you think anybody's going to care? What's going to be the story come Monday morning with this particular game if the Bills win? It's not going to be that the Bills won. It's going to be that the Patriots lost. And I feel like there's a lot of pressure on Belichick, believe it or not. And I feel like there's a lot of pressure on this rookie quarterback. And that's what worries me about New England. I can build a case for New England, but a lot of it is the same old, same old. And a lot of that comes down to the defense, Belichick, underdogs. They've dominated this division forever. And if McDermott is going to be you know, a coach that's going to be, you know, the the next greatest thing in the AFC East. He has to get past Belichick in this game. Otherwise, it's just the same old Buffalo Bills that, yeah, they made a playoff appearance, but Belichick still rules this division. And that's why I think that he's probably holding some stuff back and has held some stuff back to kind of unleash it for this particular game. So uh, I feel like we made some really good points in this game there, Uncle Dave. I'm glad we got to talk through this one. So let's talk about the Raiders, Uncle Dave. Let's talk about the Bengals. Uh, Right now, Cincinnati at home. They'll be right around minus five, minus five and a half. This line opened up Bengals minus six. Money has come in on the Raiders. Again, I haven't really heard anybody on Cincinnati. I've heard people putting Bengals in teasers. Uh, That's been pretty much the gist of it. But it seems like the pros and Joes are also aligning on the Raiders for this game. We have a current total on this one of 48. Weather report for this game here, Uncle Dave, was supposed to be bitter cold, but that has changed. Right now we're looking at around 25, 27 degrees. Uh, No wind, no snow. The snow will be moving in the East Coast. It looks like Sunday night into Monday. So a lot of people were anticipating kind of rough weather for this game. Doesn't seem to be the case. Not necessarily sure which direction you're going on this game there, Uncle Dave, but I do have a pretty strong lean to one side in this one. So how are you feeling about the Raiders and the Bengals? Yeah, this is a tough one. I mean, there's so many, so many maybes here. I think you know. I I look at the Raiders, and we know what they went through the whole season with the whole uh, coach getting canned and and wide receiver um, getting drunk and yada yada yada. And I always think the Raiders are kind of they're probably getting a free roll here, if you will, um, because after all that, and they had that sort of I think I think one and five stretch. Uh, in the middle of the season, I think people sort of wrote him off. And, you know, they played well. That was a pretty impressive win there, uh, Week 17 at Indianapolis. So, you know, they're kind of coming in hot. But, you know, I, I wonder, uh, you know, they, they lost at, 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 uh, at home to the Giants. Uh, uh, no, they lost at the Giants, or they lost at home to the Bears. Um, they lost at home to these Bengals. But was that a matter of uh, – right in the middle of that sort of emotional stuff going on. So, okay, maybe we should, maybe we should take the Bengals, but you know, then I look, the Bengals are a team that also lost to the bears, uh, lost to the jets. Uh, but, you know, down the stretch, they've actually been playing well. I, I think when I, I look at these wildcard games, especially um, I love to take the team with more experience. Um, I think the Raiders probably have a little bit more. And I wonder if the Bengals aren't a year away so I'm a little bit torn on the side. Um, I, I kind of lean Bengals, but I think I like the total a little better. So you know, the, as you said, the weather's not going to be as awful um, as we thought. It'd be a chilly, but uh, not as awful as we thought. And I, I kind of like the over. I think um, seven of the last Bengals games have gone over. Uh, I think of the four that didn't, one was at San Francisco where I think they combined for 49. The total was 49 and a half. So, you know, take your pick. Uh, one was at Denver where uh, Denver can't score and they have a defense and, the other one, one of them was that was that last game against the, the the Browns when when nobody played and nobody cared, you know and and this game is an in season 
uh, sort of rematch, if you will, against the Raiders. And, you know, that was also before uh, Chase came of age. Uh, in that game against uh, the Raiders, he was he was three for 32. Uh, Mixon ran for 132. Raiders only ran for 72. But the thing that got me about that game is the Raiders averaged almost six yards per play. So I, I that, that, again, tears me between which side I like. But, you know, I, I think the Raiders will have problems running the ball again, uh, meaning I think Carr will have the air and the ball a ton. And I think that's borne out some by his attempts prop, which I think is 36 and a half. Uh, and I think he that may not be enough attempts. I, I do like that over. Um, obviously, the Raiders have Waller back. Um, he had a little bit of playing time last week. Uh, and in that last game, he was 7 for 116. And I can see that happening again. Um, but I look at that last game, and it was, uh, I think, 45 points total. But neither team had 300 yards of offense, and they still managed, you know, I think 45 points. And, and the Bengals, they dominated time of possession and third downs. But, you know, I think now the Raiders have a film on a team that they don't see often. So I don't know who wins. I don't know by how many. Um, but I have to think Chase is more of a factor than the last time around. Um, and with Waller back, the Raiders are better on offense. Uh, and they have been down the stretch. Uh, I think all I have to do is go back and look at the 32 points uh, in regulation the Raiders put up against the Chargers, which is a total they only exceeded like one other time since late October. So I think their offense is on the uptick. Um, I think there's going to be some tightness on the Cincinnati side uh, because they are so young. So I actually do like this over, Sleepy. Good stuff there, Uncle Dave. I agree with you with the over here. I think a lot of my reasoning here, is I actually think the Bengals probably have like the third best offense out of all the teams in the playoffs. I think they're right up there with Dallas. I think they're right up there with Kansas City. Uh, I think they're actually probably a, maybe even a little bit better than Green Bay offensively and Tennessee. They have a wide receiver core that that's just – they're so deep. And, I mean, anybody could argue with me if you want to, but nobody has played quarterback over the last three weeks better than Joe Burrow. He didn't play, you know, in week 18, but – Prior to that, he threw for almost a thousand yards in two games. It's five hundred and twenty-five. I mean, he was up there in, in the NFL record books. He follows that up with like another four hundred some uh, yards. Chase is going crazy now. They got Boyd involved. Uh, T. Higgins had a monster game. Like that's just not an offense that I want to see in the playoffs. And look, let's give credit where credit's due to the Raiders. That team should not be here because of all the crap that that team has dealt with all year long and the fact that they are, you got to give that team a round of applause. On defense, they're, they're playing their asses off. On offense, they're doing everything that they can to keep themselves in games. They've had probably, I would say, some of the most dramatic games I've that I could remember seeing in, in an entire – I mean, start out with week one, like Baltimore. I mean, that team has been balls to the wall since week one, and they just finished up with a barn burner game, but that game was more than a barn burner game. That was a playoff game. And the fact that they were at home, that it went into OT, and there was a lot of things on the line going into that game. We all knew about the tie. We all knew about the pressure that was on both of these teams. And I wonder, after that win, and the fact that this team made the playoffs, if they come into this game as flat as flat could be, because they might take everything that they've done all year and take a really big, deep breath and go, you know what? We made the playoffs. Does this team going to win the Super Bowl? Do you really think that this Raiders team thinks that they can win the Super Bowl? But I'm guessing the Raiders are probably either last or second or third to last. Like They have to be in those bottom three teams uh, as far as Super Bowl odds are concerned. I don't think the Raiders have the team to win the Super Bowl, and I don't think the Raiders have – the team to win this particular game, even in a heads-up battle. But I think situationally, this is a terrible spot for the Raiders. Don't forget the Raiders have to travel to the East Coast, an indoor team going outdoors in Cincinnati. This Bengals team and this Bengals franchise and fan base, they've been craving this for how long? They know they're the better team. And if Joe Burrow is coming into this game shit hot, that worries me about the Raiders. And I worry about that defense because that defense looked gassed at the end of that game, and, and rightfully so. I mean, that was a, a grueling game for them. That defense was really what was carrying them um, down the stretch. But, you know, if you remember, you know, the fourth quarter in overtime, they couldn't get off the field. I mean, Herbert was chewing them up on fourth down 
all the way up and down the field for, you know, two full possessions. So I wonder where, where the Raiders are at mentally. I wonder where they're at physically. That worries me. And I got Joe Mixon on the other side with Cincinnati, you know, running the ball. When I look at both defenses, I have to favor Cincinnati here a little bit. And a lot of that comes back to the fact that they only trotted out so many starters last week. I mean, they basically had a built-in bye week. If Cincinnati was handed a situation in week 17, they say, here's what you guys are going to be able to do in week 18 and week 19. And the the situation that was being handed to them was, you're going to get a bye week. You're going to be able to rest your guys. You guys are going to come in come into the playoff shit hot. And you're going to play a Raiders team that ended up going to overtime that was in a virtual playoff game. And now they have to come across the country in cold weather. I would take that 99 times out of 100. So I know a lot of people are back in the Raiders here. And a lot of it is because the Raiders have been, they've been tough and they've been grueling. And the only person that really worries me on Las Vegas right now is Hunter Renfro. If Cincinnati can slow that guy down and keep him from getting the football, there is no way in hell that the Raiders are going to win this game. And I think Cincinnati has enough horses in this one to go ahead and and, uh, and get the win here. So I'm fading the, the line move in this one. I know the pros like the Raiders, and I know the, the public likes the Raiders, but I think the books are going to end up cleaning up with the Bengals in this particular game. So I think we see a lot of points here from the Bengals, Uncle David. I wouldn't be surprised if the Raiders hit you know, the board maybe a little bit early and then maybe a little bit late there in garbage time. But I have actually – I have Cincinnati winning this game somewhat comfortably. So I don't know if I said anything there that sparked anything, Uncle Dave, but that's pretty much all I got on that one. Yeah, I think I think the one thing you mentioned that um, I didn't I didn't uh, consider just yet was the fact that the Raiders used that uh, shit ton of energy to beat the Chargers the other night. Um, I think that's a, that's a, that's a big one. I, I'm almost – slapping myself upside of the head for not thinking of that before we started talking about this. Um, but I think that that is probably as valid of a point aside from X's and O's as there may be in this game. I mean, to your point, the Raiders, the Raiders do not have the longest Super Bowl odds right now. That would be the Steelers at 90 to one, uh, but the Raiders are 55 to one and they have the, the next lowest odds. So, um, you know, I, I think you may, you may be on to something there with the Bengals sleepy. You know, Uncle Dave, you just brought up something that actually I brought up in the beginning of the podcast to kind of spark something that I didn't mention for this particular game, the bias. What, what's the last thing we saw? Well, we didn't see Joe Burrow out there. We didn't see Chase out there. I mean, Chase went out, he got two passes, he was off the field once he got his little record or whatever. But nobody really remembers watching the Bengals. So it's like, well, they remember their Raider game. Everybody watched that Raiders game. So everybody's more excited for the Raiders than they are the Bengals. And I think that that's... That's where that bias is built in, and, and a lot of it's it's hard for people to shake that when they get into the playoffs when it comes time for betting. And I think a lot of people they they last forget what they saw with the Bengals because it was you know it's it's going to end up being what you know over almost three weeks since you last saw the Bengals at, at full health, and we've seen the Raiders you know clipping off win after win. So I think there's a lot of bias uh, involved here uh, with the Raiders. I think there's a lot of bias involved. Um, with the pros and the Joes this week. So I just don't want any part of, of anything that, that the pros and the Joes are on. I'm on the bookie side this entire week. That's where I'm going to be. And if you go through the last three years of the playoffs, I'll tell you right now that the underdogs and the unders have really been the way to go. It's probably in the 70 percentile if you've been betting dogs and you've been betting unders. If you're betting favorites and overs the last couple years in the playoffs, you're broke. B-R-O-K-E, you're broke because it's that strong. The trends are that strong. And it's not that I'm going that way this year, but I have a feeling that the bookies, again, clean up. And I think we're going to be hearing come Monday morning or Tuesday morning since we have a Monday night football game that the bookies had one of their best weekends of the entire year. But that'll wrap up the podcast. Good stuff there from Uncle Dave. I'm really glad he had a couple minutes to go ahead and chop up some stuff with us. We talked through two of these games. Raiders, Bengals, Patriots, Bills. We'll see how everything shakes out. Uh, but you guys know where to find us on Twitter, SleepyJ underscore pregame, at Dave underscore Essler. You guys could always get us at pregame.com. Uncle Dave and I will have our premium packages up. I'm not sure if you have yours up, Uncle Dave. I put mine out already uh, for Saturday and Sunday. So if Uncle Dave has his up, make sure you guys go to pregame and check that out. And you guys know where to find us. Uncle Dave and I will probably do another podcast here, get, at least give you guys another free pick uh, for Wild Card Weekend. But I'd like to wish you guys all the best of luck for NFL Wildcard Weekend. Enjoy the games.